my father had his first restaurant. Actually, uh, it was a fish and chip shop. He likes to keep quiet about that. He went to me to see his place. He described it as a fish and chip shop. One up for Dad. Anyway, this was the meeting place for the Chinese seamen. Why here? Oh, because of the docks and the shipping, which are just down the road there. The original Chinatown was just around the corner in Pitt Street, but it got bombed during the war, and they moved around the corner. And Great George Street was where the boarding houses used to be. Uh, in Great George Street itself, they had the boarding houses from the men from Canton. And uh, next to the Anglican Cathedral, there was a street called Nile Street. And there, the boarding houses were the men from Shanghai. Of course, uh, you know, during the Second World War, when the, uh, Europe got occupied, the seamen got stranded here. But after the war, when the communists took over, a lot of them felt they couldn't go back. The Nook. The only pub in Liverpool to have a Chinese landlord. The only pub in Britain where they shout last orders in Chinese. <laughs> so, your father's done very well. From rags to riches. Yes, the restaurant's very successful. Uh, that's why he wanted you to know his first place was a fish and chip shop. You're as bad as him. <laughs> you two staying in all day? I've got the day off. We'll make quite a reception committee, won't we? Yeah. There's not going to be a fight if that's what you're worried about. I'm not worried. Neither am I. It's all going to be all right. Good. Is the world going to end or something? I've seen happier gobs on unpaid funeral mourners. Well? Fine. Great. She's all right. There's no point in hanging around here all day, is there? Yeah, you're right. You might as well go back to work. And you? Day off. How come? Coincidence. Look. Look, they're all grown up. They've sorted out by themselves. Oh, like they did last time, you mean? Look, it'll be all right, I'm telling you. You know as well as I do. When me dad and Sheila walk through that door, me mum's going to be bouncing off walls. She's all right. She's in control. There's going to be a Barney. Not according to me mum, there isn't. Well, I want to be here to stop it. You'll only be in the way. That's the big idea. Oh, whose side are you on? The side of law enforcement. Louise, there's nothing to be frightened of here, is there? No. Good. You know, ignoring problems and hoping that they'll disappear by forgetting about them doesn't really work. I mean, a lot of people try to deal with problems that way, but it really doesn't work, not for anyone. I know. And whoever it is, if nobody's told, he might, he probably will, try it on with someone else. Now, he may have done this sort of thing before, and nobody's told, and so he was able to move on to you. But he's got to be stopped. You won't get into trouble. I'll see to that. I'm on your side. But we know that he's in the home, and... Do you think you can tell me his name? Louise? Let's wash your pay. Nice girl. Very pretty. Yes, yeah, she is. Caroline likes her. Really? Good family. Good job. Good hips. Dad. If you don't like her, that's all right. Take your time. Oh, thanks, Dad. Are you coming back for tea with us? I wouldn't want to be in your way. If you were in our way, I wouldn't ask you. Come on, Amy will feel less inhibited. On condition. You take her out tonight without me. Dad, there's one thing you're forgetting. Amy, I don't know what she thinks of me and neither do you. Then take her out tonight and find out. Come on, let's have a smile. My dad's been in Ireland now with Sheila for three weeks. If he was going to leave her, he'd have been home within days. 
I want my mum and dad back together. Me too, but it isn't gonna happen, Tracy. Well, whatever happens, my mum isn't going for good. Right, so just leave it up to me, all right? What, what are you gonna do? Well, I've got it sussed. Well, that's a first. Just make sure you're not around. Well, what are you gonna do? That will get you that. Oh, you've gotta be kidding. If you think I'm doing anything on your seat, so you're even stupider than I thought you were. Oh, eh, uh, right, I'll call back later, then, eh? It's upstairs. What is? I'll call over later. What's upstairs? Sheila's suitcase. Oh, what's the big idea, like? Me and Barry are just sorting things out, that's all. Barry Grant's stopping trouble. He'd run me dad over with his van as soon as he looked at him. I've sorted it all out, OK? Oh, yeah? Why don't you see what Harry Cross is doing? Oh, and why are you asked to see what Paul and Annabelle Collins are doing as well? Get them all over. We'll have a party, eh? At least they're doing something. What are you doing? Nothing. Obviously, my husband is as anxious as I am to find out as much about Louise before we make some permanent decision. Indeed. We'd certainly be doing enough checking up on you two. Standard procedure. But I see no reason why we can't answer any questions you might have. Well, it's um, basic history, really. I mean, I know she was born in 1975, but not why she was taken into care. It's usually a sad story. Oh, yes, of course. Mother Upton left eight years ago. She kept the family afloat, it seems. Father, long-term unemployed, held things together for five years, broke his leg, couldn't cope. Both kids missing school. Gary, 16, in care. Louise with discipline problems. Classic pattern, I'm afraid. So you're saying it was economic circumstances? Some might say political. Unemployment breaks up a lot of families. Well, I suppose it can. There's no suppose about it, Mrs Collins. I can quote you plenty of examples. I'm a JP. I'm aware of what goes on. Louise is at the bottom of the pile, and she sees you as being at the top. Great expectations, isn't it? it? How does your husband feel about fostering Louise? Well, he's quite happy to go along with whatever I decide. He'll need to be more than quite happy. I know it's early stages and all that, but he is aware of how big a commitment this is. My husband doesn't usually show much enthusiasm in case he's disappointed. But I do know him. And he does miss Lucy, our daughter, although he'd never admit it. And he would make the most perfect foster parent, were we to... You two obviously have a lot of talking to do. Is there anything else? Has Louise got a, a boyfriend at school or anything like that? And then I don't suppose you'd know. Oh, we'd know, all right. If it's remotely public, we'd hear about it soon enough, but... So, no problem with boys? No, not yet. Everything's in there. No need to worry. Nice one, Rod. See you right. later. All right, see you later. OK, you're right then. OK, draw, Dad. Why didn't you let me speak to him? The money ran out. What? Well, it's like that when you call from long distance. The pier head, yeah? Ireland, actually. They're not coming home till tomorrow, so we've both had our eye wiped. Better go and tell Rambo and all. What was all that about? Nothing. Why wouldn't you let him speak to your dad? The money ran out. You might be able to fool him, but not your mother. You wanted us out the way, didn't you? Ah, tomorrow. Don't blame me. Well, why not today, like? You were having a good time. All right, well, we'll have to go tomorrow then, won't we? Can't take another day off. Well, all right, so I'll go on my own, OK? God, what a waste of a day. Hey, listen, Rod. Um, I don't fancy giving us a hand, um, shifting some stuff, do you? Oh, don't be silly. Well, what else are you doing? You'll only be sitting in the house. What stuff? Um, well, it's just a few boxes I've got at this warehouse. I've got to shift them to a place in Fairfax Street. Where are you going? Um, just going to Nicky's. I don't want to waste the day. Where's she live? Not a screen. Do you want a lift? Er, uh, no, you're all right. Yeah, it's not like it's on my way. No, I'm all right, I'll get the bus. He's offering you a lift, soft girl. Why don't you take it? 
Yeah, there. I mean, he's coming as well. There's no problem, like. Well, hurry up, then. I don't believe this. Anyone thinks he was doing me a favour? Get in, Bob. Before we do anything, let me just have a cup of tea. No chance. First stop, ten bucks high, close. Let's get home and get it over and done with, eh? She's gonna be thirsty. We'll get a lemonade, seems like in the cab on the way home, can't you? Well, it won't kill you to phone. Hmm? Well, come on and get there. Look, we've been away for three weeks. Half an hour's gonna make no difference. I really have enjoyed myself, Mr. Choi. Good. Michael's been very kind and considerate. It could be time for Michael to visit Hong Kong. It's too soon, I think. The trouble with the dead, they cling to the living. I'm as sorry as you. Still, one good custom the English have, they solve everything from broken hearts to broken legs with a cup of tea. I thought they got that from us. Here we go. Ever since Dad bought his restaurant, he loves being waited upon. <laughs> Tiara, wasn't too bad, was it? Great. Would have still been waiting for the bus. Well, what do you want me to do, pay the bus fare? No, I was just saying it was a lot quicker, like. Yeah, we'll keep this if it would have been quick getting the bus. See oh, ya. Thanks a lot. Right, come on, let's go. All right, bud. She'll be back. She might have given up and gone. Right, let's get down there and form a reception committee then, eh? First stop, we drop her off at Matty's. Right, let's go then. Better be completely straight. Not like the police force, you mean? Hey, um, did they say they'd be back at the same time, or what? Don't know, she didn't say. We'd well, better find out if you'll see you tonight, then, haven't you? Yeah. She's chuffed I won't be there. Oh, yeah. She wants my mum and dad, you know, to be on her own to sort it out, like. She went crazy when she heard you were gonna be floating around. Did, uh, did you speak to your alpha? No, the money ran out. Hey! Did you hear his voice then? No. Well, no wonder she didn't want to lift. Get in, Rod. What do you mean? Just get in, eh? So do you know what you're going to do if Dorian's still there? I think she'll still be there, babe. Look, I know she'll still be there, all right? Yeah, calm down and you can think clearly. I'm fed up thinking about it. Look, uh, ten brooks I close, all right, all right, mate? So do you know what you're going to do if she's still there? Yes. What? Throw her out. I don't know what's more stupid, you know. 
Me for believing you or you for believing your Tracy. We don't know for certain yet. Think positive, we might just get there in time. In time to see blood spilt, you mean? Well, who says our Tracy's lying? Rod, are you definitely thinking of joining the CID? What's it got to do with you? Well, I mean, you're not exactly Sherlock Holmes material, are you? Mean in what light? Don't worry, Mum. If Sheila Grant thinks she's setting so much as one foot over my doorstep... Yeah, yeah, of course. If she wants a fight, she'll get one. Here we go. Well, there are two of us, if any one of us. She's the bloody locks, hasn't she? Let's come back when she's in. You're joking, are you? That's my house. Really? Let's try the back first. All right. I don't know what she thinks she's playing at, you know. She's fighting. Yeah, well, she needn't have bothered, needs she? No. Listen, look, it's just you and me now, all right? Yes. And then nothing else matters. It's changed. What do you mean? What's been going on? Welcome home, Billy. What's she doing here? She lives here. Not in my half of the house, she doesn't. And what are you doing here? I live here. You haven't lived here for two years. This house belongs to Mr and Mrs Corkill. You're Mr Corkill. Are you Mrs Corkill? I see you found your suitcase. Phone yourself a taxi, all right? Billy, I'm not going anywhere. You know it, I know it. And so does she. I'm staying. My house, my kids, my husband. This is strictly between me and him. Thank you and good night. Look. Just shut it, all right? You want me to call the police? You what? You've no right of entry. Oh, behave yourself. I could have him locked up like that. I can do what the hell I like. Who the so... hell do you think you are? Get rid of her. Please, please. Sheila. We'll need an ambulance and all if somebody's not careful. Leave it! <laughs> well, she really put up a fight there, Billy. It must be love. Rod? Barry. Is that something? Get this into your thick skull. I love Sheila. I'm not interested in Sheila. You can't hold a candle to her. She's everything that you're not. And I don't just love her, I admire her. She's got no airs of graces like you. Forget about her. I'm talking about us. So that's what you've been doing for the past two years, is it? Holding the family together. I had to leave. What? Wild horses drag it away, did he? She could never go through what we've been through and come out the other side. We've got two kids and that means something. And don't think I'm going to stand by and watch you break up my family. Me break up the family? That's me. what you're doing with her. Look, she loves me now. No kidding. Yes. The minute she 
she finds out exactly who you are, she'll elbow you, no bother. She won't. She loves me, I'm telling you. How can she? She doesn't even know you. What are you talking about? I've been living with a woman for eight months, haven't I? Her youngest son was stabbed to death and you were in a robbery where a man was knifed. It wasn't my fault. Oh, Damon's killer probably said the same thing. Mum, are you all right? Yes. You sure? Yes. Has anything happened? No. This is all there is to me. This house, those kids, and you. Once you ruined my home, and I helped you do it, now you want to do it again with that thing out there. Well, if that's what you want, yeah, I'll help you. What are you doing? What are you doing, you dash coward? What are you doing? Destroying my family, my home, and my money. Yes. Oh, yeah. But she isn't taking the kids, is she? killed up this home for some Hail Mary. But she's not taking the kids, is she? Come over. It's over. it's over, can't you see? It's over. It's over between you and it. So get out and tell her. No, don't tell her. Get out. Get off your head and what? Oh, come what on, you Mum. Cow. Hey, will you you keep hold him over there. Yeah, I'm staying there. Stop it. Don't let him know who he is. Get the cow over there. Stop it. 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 St
Well? Put it in the house this size. Well, what about? Well, there's no need for it, is it? I mean, you can stand here in the kitchen and you can hear a fly fart on the roof. It's a good job I'm thinking about this baby, because I'm damn sure that you're not. Look, it's not worth the money, is it? Oh, of course it's down to money. No, it isn't. How much is a baby worth, Terry? Oh, can you believe this, eh? Can you believe it? Yeah, can you believe it? And all these years you thought you knew him. Look, eh, how much is it in to come? About 20 quid. Hey, behave. Well, look, if you can hear the baby in stereo, it keeps Sue happy and it stops you two down. Well, I mean, that's got to be worth 20 quid of anyone's money, hasn't it? Thanks, Barry. You'd never have thought of that. Tell you what, Sarah, I'll even, uh, I'll even fit it for you as well, if you want. You'd like a special treat, I guess, and the puppy nodded. No, no, no. <laughs> Should have said yes, 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 shouldn't he? Well, one of us better say something. A knife? You were involved with a gang who carried a knife? I didn't know they had one. <laughs> I didn't do it. I don't know you. I don't know anything about you. No wonder I've never met any of your friends. Something in the back of my mind kept nagging at me. I mean, why would a woman walk out on a family? Two years and not ever get in touch with the kids. Why would she do that? And I don't know Doreen very well, but she seemed to love her kids as much as the next mother. So why? What drove her to do it? To disappear? Throw away 20 years of marriage just like that? Well, now I know. I'd have shocked you. We were up to our eyes in debt. We were going under. So you stabbed a man? How many more times you want telling I never stabbed no one? But why? That's why. I thought you got on well with your father. Well, not lately. Well, how long's it been like that? He doesn't like me coming here. Why ever not? He's jealous, isn't he? He knows I like it here. He won't let me talk about you, this house, the carpets, everything. Well, you'll have to go and see him more often if he gets upset. <laughs> I'd be the same in his shoes. In fact, I'd be downright jealous. That's just what he is. He's dead jealous of me coming here all the time. He's scared you might adopt me. Is that the only problem? Yeah. Well, you'll just have to go and see him more often. All right. Look, I'm talking as a parent. Also, we need his permission for you to come and stay here. So next time he wants to see you, you will go, won't you? No. Why ever not? There's nothing to be frightened of, Louise. If your father's the problem... Look, nobody lays a finger on me. I just want a bit of attention, that's all. Everyone was ignoring me all the time. I told you that so that you wouldn't kick me out, OK? Are we the only people you've told? Yeah. And I was lying. So let's just forget I ever said it, OK? Keeping my mouth shut. You're not going to do anything stupid, are you? I did enough of that yesterday. It'll have cooled down now, same as you. Mm. Nice, the girl could get used to this. It's nearly half eleven, you know. And I wasn't even drunk. Any word for me, Dad? I think this staying at a friend of Sheila's. 
You do me a favour. Go round there. Will you? And say what? You won't go without saying to Ra, will you? Who says I'm going anywhere? There you go, workers. Coffee. Nice one, sir. Cheers. Make someone a lovely wife, won't I? Certainly will. Baby born, is it? You what? The celebration. Oh, it's coffee, that, Harry, not champagne. Wouldn't put it past you. You're unusually cheerful this morning, Harry. What's up? Ralph been run over, has he? I've come to do you a favour. No, sir, I'm fixing the window. It's me that's doing you the favour. Hey, what about me? Don't I get one? Yeah. What about me? Look, you don't want him living with you and your missus, do you? Who, him? No. Yeah, he does. I've come to solve your problem. You can come and live with me for two weeks and a day, not a minute more, not a minute less. No, you're all right, Sally. I'm getting off in a week or so, anyway. And that's gratitude for you. Hey, hang on a minute. My mate Mick's looking for somewhere. He's desperate. He'd have to be, wouldn't he? I'll just ignore that remark. Yeah, just shut up a minute, will you? You're on. Two weeks and one day, 30 quid a week, and it can have the extra day free. But why two weeks and a day? That's my business. Take it or leave it. Oh, you don't want ten references? A cash deposit or, you know, rent in advance? Will you vouch for him? Oh, yeah, he's me other driver. Right, we'll go and get him, then. Go and give him a bell, eh? Do you know Massey's address? You say his name's Mick? Uh, Mick Johnson. Oh, he's not Irish, then? No, no, no. Look, his wife's just throwing them out. They're getting a divorce or something. Oh, that's sad. Hello, love. Oh, hello, Mr Cross. Call me Harry. I don't call you Mrs Sullivan now, do I? No, nobody does, Harry. Do you want some tea? Allow me. A woman in your condition. Mick, it's Terry. Being honest means asking questions as well as giving truthful answers. Well, what do you want me to say? Well, nothing really. Oh. All right, then. I was wondering why you told me what had happened to you and then said it wasn't true. Because it wasn't true. Well, then why say it in the first place? Well, I wanted someone to take notice of me. I'm stupid like that sometimes. But like you said, if someone's going to be a friend, you've got to take notice of them. Haven't you? Had a nice time. Yes, she did. And I enjoyed myself too. Come on, let's wash your hands and I'll get you something to eat. Look, uh, thanks for your hospitality, Matty, but uh, I think I'd better be going, mate. <laughs> Look, Bill, I know we don't know each other that well, but, well, whatever's happened can be sorted out, you know. That's why I was telling that to Sheila. I've known her many years and she never does or says anything lightly. Well, she's just given me the elbow and she didn't do that lightly either. Oh, she'll come round in a few days, mate. The thing to remember is this. No one's died and it's not the end of the world. Yeah. Yeah. I know you really couldn't talk here, even when I was out. It's not your home, you see. Yeah. I didn't realise what you had to put up with being ours and that, you know. You need to get back to the close, mate. <laughs> the <laughs> what's audience going to say about that? Listen, none of you have got any fight left, in you? But what you need to do is go around and see her, talk her through properly, and when you've done all that, come back here and sort it out with Sheila. Here, give us that case. Look, uh, thanks, Matty, all right? Go away. Meet your new lodger, there's Mick. All right, Mr Cross. Nice to meet you. I'll get your gear. Well, uh, Terry obviously didn't mention it, so I suppose I'd better. Mention what? I'm black. You could have fooled me. Is the room still empty or what? Aye. The colour of your money I'm interested in. You make a good cup of tea? 
I'm house trained, all right. Hey, wait till Ralph sees him. Why? Well, Ralph's not as tolerant as me, is he? Who is, Ali? Who is? I suppose most of all I feel cheated. He's not the man I thought he was. It's all been an act. Oh, you're dead wrong there, Sheila, love. You don't know what he's done. I don't need to know and I don't want to know. That man loves the bones of you and it doesn't matter what's went on in his past. I told him everything there was to know about me. He owed me the same, but it never came back. Well, how do you know he wasn't trying to pull it out of his mind? Completely. Out of his life. We've all got to face up to things, Matty. Well, you can't blame him for being scared of telling you some... Well, some terrible truth that might drive you away. Listen, he, he was scared of losing you, and I don't blame him. I'd be the same myself. Yeah, but you don't know what he's done. Couldn't have done worse than I done. What? I killed Theresa. Oh, don't be stupid, Matty. It wasn't your fault. Well, I drove it to it. No, you didn't. Well, maybe it was, and maybe it wasn't. But I'll never be certain. Matty, you can't keep blaming yourself. And you can't keep blaming Billy. I mean, I made some stupid mistakes with Theresa, and I'll never have the chance to put them right. So don't you end up that way with Billy. Because you'll never forgive yourself, I'm telling you. Hi, Mr. Cross. One sugar. Oh, thanks, Mick. Nice place. It does, me. Been here long, have you? Five years. Lived next door for a bit. But the wife fancied this place. They always get what they want, don't they? <laughs> or get divorced. Ah, there's too much of that nowadays. You know, people don't work at it. No offence, man. Uh, you might be right there. Lots of people don't realise what they're getting into. And then by the time they do... You got any kids, Mr Cross? Call me Harry. One son, Kevin. And a grandson. You? Yeah, one lad. One little girl. Tell you what, you never want to lose touch with them. I don't intend to. Um, would it be all right if I brought them round here? I mean, just for the day, like. Are they tearaways? Well, a bit, yeah. I suppose it'll be all right. I'll just make arrangements not to be here. There you go, dear. Help yourself. Mm. All right. All right. Well, you certainly know how to spoil a girl, Barry. Yeah, must be a gift, eh, sir? What's all this? Food, Terry. An essential requirement for sustaining the human body. Oh, how long have you been a galloping gourmet? Eh, uh, I only made the uh, spaghetti Susan did the balinese. She's not supposed to be on her feet for more than four hours a day. She asked her name and she was only on the pins for 15 short minutes, OK? Sure it was 15? Yeah. So you got it? Yeah, 35 quid's worth, the best he had. Can I go to bed now? Yeah, Barry said he'd put it in for us. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? As I said, that's the best they had, that you'll have been able to hear the baby puke from anywhere in the house. And if you hang around here much longer, you'll be able to hear me puke. Who's my best mate as well? I'm sorry. I think everyone is. What happens now? Divorce. Is that what you want? You want to marry Sheila? <sighs> She's a Catholic. She wouldn't marry me now, not after she knows the truth. I've ruined it every way for you, haven't I? You didn't ask me to go on a robbery with a gang of nutters carrying the knife, did you? Not in so many words. Yeah. Well, everyone does one stupid thing in their life, and that was mine. You married me. That was the good bit. Got two smashing kids out of it, didn't we? I wouldn't have missed it for the world. No. Neither would I. So why does it have to end? Because.
Hauses. Sheila doesn't want you. She doesn't know you. <laughs> I think she does now. Not the way I know you. You're not making this very easy, are you? It was never easy. That's why it was so good. What's between you and me isn't something you can measure in a jug. When I was throwing things at you and you were yelling at me, not once, not once did you say, I don't love you. It's over, though. You still love me, Billy. We both know you do. This isn't on. Why isn't it? It isn't. It isn't fair. In the 20 years we've been together, when have I ever been fair? You fell for me because I was completely unreasonable. I was vicious yesterday. I said things knowing that Sheila would hear, wanting her to hear, so she'd leave you. You're still my husband. There's still our kids. This is still my house, and I still want you. Don't, please. And I'd look back in five years' time, and I'd still feel ashamed of those things, but I'd be glad I said them. I'd be chuffed I said them. They'd be the best things that I ever could have said because they would have brought us back together. Stop it. Admit it, Billy. You still want me. Underneath it all, no matter what you think of Sheila, it's what you want. I'm your roots. No. No. If you still love me, and you do, then I'm staying. Though, can't you see that it's over? Not until you say you don't love me. It's gone. Say it. It's in the past. That's not what I'm hearing. You hear what you want to hear. Not until you say it. We both know it isn't right. You can't say it, can you? Words, that's all they are. You still love me. Then say it. Or I stay here and you stay with me. I don't love you anymore. Into my eyes. What? You don't get off that easy. I've just said it. To my face. I don't love you anymore. You always wear a lousy liar, Billy. <laughs> You heard what me mum said about me dad and what he did? Yes. I wish I hadn't. <sighs> Too late for wishes. She didn't say why he did it. Oh, so you're going to tell me instead, are you? Look, it's not easy for me coming here today. It hasn't been easy for me living in your house. Then you know how I feel. Yes. Me mum got us into all kinds of debt. HP, credit cards, the bank, the mortgage, everything. We nearly lost the house. <sighs> My dad was working all the hours God sent, and he still couldn't keep his head above water. He didn't want to see us on the streets. He was willing to risk everything, even jail. A man was stabbed? Yeah. And my dad took him to hospital, right up to the casualty, even though he knew the fella had seen his face. He could have left him in the street, bleeding to death miles away from anywhere. But he never. He did what was right. Not what was right for himself, but what was right. So if you don't want him, let him know. Quick. Because there's someone else who does. Know what I mean? Yeah. I know what you mean. Good. What made you come here? Your mother. It's too late now. Oh, I don't know. Your dad might like to read it. No, it's better if he doesn't. Anyway, it's out of date.
I'll uh, get the house values and let you know. We'll after you. Oh, that's too much. You've got the kids. Ah, they're both there, then we'll manage, no bother. How did we get to this, Billy? I don't know. I just don't know. It was my fault. I forced you into going on the robot. It was no one's fault. It just happened. Yeah, it just happened. Will you do me a favour? Yeah, I think. Kiss me goodbye. to get you the cab. No, I'd sooner get the bus. Keep in touch with the kids, eh? Yeah, all right, tell them. Ta-da. Ta-da. From the banks of Lake Windermere next for the children on a holiday with a difference in Jimmy's. Coming up next. Look, um, I don't want to be late for Claire. It's her first day at proper infants. Look, I'll give you a lift if you want. Look, when I spoke to you on the phone, he, he said you'd come. He said you wanted to come back. I've waited, but you haven't shown. I didn't give a time and I didn't give a day. No, you didn't say anything much, did you? Well, what do you expect? Look, we've got to work this thing out. How? By dragging out all your skeletons. I mean, how much do you think I can take? She's supposed to be gone, but she isn't. Sheila's staying here. I stood in that room, Billy, and you acted as if I didn't exist. I stood in the room while she insulted me and you acted as if I didn't exist. Well, never again. You never do that to me again. And you don't use me. You can't offload your lousy past on me and expect me to soak it up, because I just don't want to know. Listen, Sheila, she's gone. I need you, for God's sake. Oh, do you? Why? Because she's gone? No, because I love you. You loved me in Ireland. Why has it stopped? Oh, I haven't stopped. Then why are you still here? 
I'm waiting in that empty house. Every time I hear the bloody door, it's Rod or it's Tracy. You promised you'd come, why haven't you? Oh, because I like it here, because... because I can hear myself think. Yeah, so you can shut yourself off, so you can turn your back on... What? On that. On the things we had in Ireland. Talking, joking, life. Well, if that's what you want, that's all right. But you think about it now. Go, all right? She let everything to mess. There are bits and pieces all over the place. But with you here and me there, we've got no chance of sorting it. We might not sort it out anyway. We've got no chance unless we're in the same house. Throw some things in a bag, eh? It's tough. <laughs> Too tight to get a taxi, weren't you? You're waiting for the lift. <laughs> hi, Sue. Oh, hi. My God, you've got plenty of energy, haven't you? Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Mm. I reckon it's a sign. You ready for the off? Oh, don't say that. Oh, Katie was early, and she was fine. Hey, Sue, what are you doing? I reckon she's revving up, love, for the off. Well, I didn't want to do any uh, hoovering, Terry, in case I woke you up. Yeah, well, there's no need... Oh, I'm coming down. Hey, Chrissy, can I ask you, how do I know when I am off? Oh, listen, the baby will know, and that's the main thing. And believe me, once it decides to go, it goes. You'll be amazed. Oh, and the other thing, you know these practice contractions that you get? I mean, how do you know when they've stopped and the real ones have started? Well, you know what, though, Jeff? I clocked into hospital three times and two of those were false alarms, you know. Sue! So... I know what you're going to say, but, you know, I'll put my feet up when I'm ready. All right, finish this. <laughs> Listen, Terry, can I ask you a favour? You used to be over at our house a lot, didn't you? Well, that was when Barry was there, but that was ages ago. Well, I I'd just like your opinion on something. Could you come over for a bit? Yeah, of course you can. It'll stop him fussing over me. Uh, yeah, I suppose so. But if her blood pressure goes up again, they'll have to take it in and induce her. I'll have a rest in a minute, all right? Yeah, but with all this work, I could bring it on early, couldn't it? Well, that wouldn't be so terrible, would it? What does he really think? Did he really get on with Amy? How do I know? I didn't trail around with him all the time. You know how he's been since she left. Is he pleased to get back to his English friend? Excuse me. Uh, I can't get any answer from, uh... You don't know where they are, do you? No, sorry, I don't. Oh. It's just that I don't know whether to wait, that's all. I'd come back later if I were you. She's probably gone to get the girl from school. The girl? The girl who's staying there. That's right. Come back later, the best plan. Yeah. So. And since she left? Well, Michael's spoken to Miss Gregory on the phone. I think she wanted to take him out. But I think she told him she wasn't free. She wasn't at his beck and call. That's all I wanted to know. Well? Oh, I don't remember anything like this when I was here. And I can't remember Barry saying anything. I knew there was something wrong. Frank said I was just being neurotic. No, no, you're not. Look, uh, you don't mind, do you? But I've got to get off. Oh, of course. Now, Frank got this fellow in from work. No guarantee, no nothing. It was cheap. If it is dried up, then you're going to have to get a proper firm in. Yeah, I know, and that's going to mean more money. What about the fellow who had it before? Yeah, I mean, he had it all boarded up when it was empty, didn't he? I mean, it must have been damned then, so he's got to be responsible. I can't even begin to think about that yet, Terry. I've still got to get Frank to believe me. Well, for what it's worth, tell him I think you're right. Mind you, not that my opinion's worth much these days. I mean, I don't even know much about pregnant women. She's just getting the nest ready, that's all. What, cleaning? Mm, it's instinct. Well, I'm not having it. I'm going to go and put my foot down. See ya. Yeah, thanks, Terry. What are you going to do with the owl one, then? I don't know. I'll give it to Claire, I suppose, if and when she wants it. Remember the day you got it? Yeah. The day we went to Ackill and I went mad about those cliffs. It's like coming to the edge of the world. Listen, uh, the sooner we talk, the better. Well, the sooner I talk, anyway. Look, I know more than you think. I don't think you do. 
Tracy came to see me at Matty's. Why? To fill me in a bit. I suppose you wanted me to see your side of things. Well, I'd let you see my side of things if you give me the chance to talk. I just need a bit more time. Let me explain about that robbery, eh? No. Look, it was awful here before we went away. No more. But the holiday was brilliant. Yes, I know it was, and you're trying to undo it all. Well, I just don't want to know. Well, what do you want? More of your retreat, burying yourself in all of that? Look, it's why you did it that hurts. It just made me realise how much you loved her. Look, Doreen's gone. This is our house again, isn't it? <laughs> It's never been our house. It's never felt like my house. I miss my house. I miss my family. Look, we're going to be late. I was late for Karen once at infant school. I never forgave myself. It seemed like the most wicked thing I'd ever done. Lucky you. Oh, come on. I didn't mean... Look, don't make me feel like a leper, all right? I'm sorry. Look, we have to go or we're going to be late. I've poured you a cup of tea. Did he ask for one? I didn't come to school to check up on you. I just happened to be passing by. Oh, yeah. You're not set. Must be something wrong with your fridge. There's nothing wrong with my fridge. You should have put those in the freezer. Anyway, I could have bought you lollies. Well, yours is the pineapple. Do you want to shove them back in? Did I ask for one? Have my tea. I might just have your lolly later. Would you want it set or like a slush? Set. Louise, a visitor. Hiya. All right. I missed you last week. It's cold. You remember, they? Can my dad have a cup of tea? Yes, of course. Can I do it? Yes. That's how I used to do them. He showed me. It was his idea. It wasn't the real fruit juice, mind. Do sit down. She has two kinds of sugar. White or yellowy. White will do. She has everything. She lets me cook. Well. And she lets me use the mixer. Did you come just to see Louise? To see you, Mrs. Collins. I, uh, I know you've had a chat with Mrs. Mackay. Well, there's things I want to say as well. Chat about what? Oh, just things in general. Uh, why you happen to be in Chadwick House? There, because he put me there. For your own good. For her own good. For both their sakes. For, for Gary, too. Because I couldn't cope. He wants me to stay at Chadwick House. Because he hates me coming here all the while. Every time I see him now, he's on and on about it. Oh, it's stupid. She's biased against the place. Well, I live there. You don't. Live there? You're always bunking off. And I'll tell you something else. I'll tell you what you don't like. It's being supervised. It's being checked. What else is wrong with it? Be honest. Name one thing. Well, if she's unhappy there... Because there's discipline, that's why. And that's the only reason. But when I first met Louise, when she was offending, that was where she was offending from. I didn't go on the rod before. For not when I was living at home with you, anyway. You did everything else. You ran away, you stopped out at night. If it was so good with me, eh, why couldn't you have behaved yourself? And I wouldn't have had to go to them. And we'd still be together now. Louise, I think your father should have a chance of saying how he feels. As long as I stay in the room. Well, that might make it a little difficult. Whose side are you on? I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. I know Louise. Don't expect her to make it easy for you. What's that about? Go on, talk about me. You must give him this. It's a present for him from Amy. 
I don't think Michael bought something for her. I gave her something on his behalf. Remember the earrings she liked so much? You might have asked me first. I came to ask, but you weren't in. So I had a game with Jessica. If we took them, would you notice? Is it a game to involve the child? Jessica loved helping me. She would love to see Amy again, but in Hong Kong. Well, that's not very likely. Michael could take her. Then he could see Amy too, on a home ground, where he can't be distracted. Well, I've nothing against Chadwick House. In fact, I think they do a very good job. Because they're paid, that's why. They're paid to deal with these difficult girls. Why should an outsider bother, eh? Well, you gave your permission for her to stay here. She put the arm on me, that's why. She threatened to do a runner if I didn't agree. You don't know that side of her. Yes. But when I learned that you'd been to see Mrs. Mackay, I thought, what is all this? Has she got something more in mind? Am I getting a hint of fostering here? Because, well, I've failed my kids in lots of ways, right? But the one thing I have managed to do is keep them both together. But Gary's older than Louise. He can't stay there indefinitely. Well, then will be the time to think again. But he'll stick by his sister, that's for sure. Because that's how I've brought him up, to give each other mutual support. Louise, how did that happen? Oh, you've got a lot to learn. Get over here, you. The late taps, get your paws off. Hey! Christopher Mitchell, please, she's hurt. She did it on purpose, can't you see? You need eyes in the back of your head. You were dead, me and you. Cheap old lolly ice is yours, we. Crap. Page of phone numbers in here. If you're thinking of phoning Lenny Frank, then forget it, because I don't want him anywhere near the house. What? Hang on, this. I gave that fella five hundred pound. If the job's gone wrong, you should put it right. Oh, and you think he can do that, do you? Because it's my guess he'll make it a hundred times worse. Well, what do you want me to do? Where could buy the five hundred pound? Getting a proper firm. That could cost us fifteen hundred. Don't you quote money at me, Frank Rogers? It wasn't me that went and bought this place and mortgage just up to our ears without even a survey. All the more reason to get hold of Lenny. And if he can't do the job, I want the £500 back. He's not getting away with it, that's for sure. Oh, all right, you do what you like. Hey, come here. Leave that. Jeff will finish it off. No. Oh, listen. I'll get hold of Lenny. No. I'm going to... It's the untreated wool. It's like oily or something, isn't it? Yeah, well, the best like that. There was a shop full of them, you know. He was stuck for choice. So you chose this one. You want a drink? Mum. Did it work out for you? Yeah. It's just a... Well... She seemed a bit upset. I wondered if the holiday had lived up to expectations. The holiday was fine. There's nothing wrong. Nothing I can't manage. Right. Hello, Billy. How's work? Eh, mad busy. What about you? Same, yeah. Good. Right, well, eh, uh, well... Stay. Up. Let's eat together. I'd like that. That's all right with me, yeah? Great. I'll just check on Claire and then I'll fix us something. Look, uh, I've got to be here somewhere, you know. Probably. Look, I always feel you can call down, you know. Your mum, she buys in for like a siege and that. I do know that. Yeah. Look, uh, it helps you being here, you know. Didn't know for finding Dory in here, though, did it, Billy? No, it didn't. 
I always thought if she came back to... Did your mum would get the elbow? Yeah. No chance. Well, I'm glad about that, Billy. Cos he's had enough downers. Yeah, I know that. So, uh, what's it mean that he... ...feel better about us now, what? No, not really. But if it's what she wants... Yeah, well, that's fair enough, isn't it? One of your famous runners, are you? Before you go, could you tell me what you've done to the fridge? I've turned the number up, that's all. Well, if you're going to stay here, perhaps we should have a few rules. You don't go fiddling around, and you don't go rooting around. You don't read letters. If Paul knew you'd read those letters, you wouldn't be allowed in this house again. You are? And he wouldn't mind you kept them, eh? Well, of course he would. But he'd mind even more that you had read them. Well, you wouldn't have me back anyway. There's no reason for you to say that. You believe what my dad says? He rubbishes me and all you do is sit there. Louise, I have no choice. We need your father's permission for you to come here. I have to listen to him. He is your father. You don't have to feel sorry for him, though. Well, I must admit I did. But you don't feel sorry for me. Why do you think you're here? But you just let me walk off. Because I can't let you blackmail me. It's hard enough trying to sort out the lies. I haven't told you lies. Someone molesting you at the home? And then it didn't happen to you? There's got to be a lie there somewhere. I think I'll stop tonight. Do you want the fridge turning back on two or what? On two. I knew he recognised me. I thought all those coppers must have seen it too. Every pulse in my body was going like mad. But that bastard, he let me stew, he let me stew my own sweat. And he didn't identify me either. And after that came the blackmail? Yeah. I left this flower in the getaway yeah, car. Yeah, from the wedding. I know you told me. Please, don't go on. I haven't told you what he said. Billy, I don't want to know. I'll never sleep. For thinking what you got yourself tied up in, you mean? No. For thinking what it must have been like for you all. Including Doe? Yeah, including Doe. And Tracy, who half knew. And Rod, who didn't, never can. See, when you say it's in the past... It is. Billy, I don't know the man you're talking about. But it's me. Yes, but I don't know him. It's me, and Rod's still a copper in that same nick. And someday someone might say something. I saw your owl fella in that lineup, and I know he got away with it. And what will you say when he comes home? I can't deal with that. That's not my Billy. Don't drag me in on it. Yeah, I see what you mean. But look, we've got to make a fresh start, and we can't do that unless you put it all behind you. But I can't until you know. But you mean more than know, don't you? You mean forgive. Maybe. The thing is, has it done for us? You know what I mean? Has it done for our chances, like? No. Are you sure? Look, when I was breaking up with Bob and when Damon died, it was you I knew I could turn to, could lean on, to break the news for Barry, for instance. There's no violence, no lies. That's how we started off. And nothing you've said has changed that. All right, one day, if you like, I'll hear you out. Every detail, every word. I'll learn it off by heart, if you like. But don't rake it up now. 
Don't go charging at it all at once. I mean, after all we've just been through. Billy, I, I can't take it anymore. We're so different, aren't we? Yeah, thanks. I just thought I'd check, you know. All right. He said he's definitely on his way. He's only going to be a minute or two. Oh, well, that's what they said before. Yeah, he'll be here in a minute. Oh, there he is. Come on, Sally. Thanks, one. Oh, sorry about that. This fella, he didn't have the right fit. Yeah, well, you're here now. That's all that matters. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you going to get changed? No, no. Come on, let's get you down there, eh? Oh, so much is... Oh, right. What are you doing with buses? Uh, well, it's something they taught us at the classes, isn't it? I mean, that's why a lot of dads pass out, because they go without food. I mean, we could food. be there all night, couldn't we? Good idea, so. <laughs> yeah, well, look, do you want me to drive or what? No, no, look, I, I think I'll be all right. I mean, it's just come earlier, that's all. I didn't expect it. I mean, premature babies, oh, I mean, they're more at risk, aren't they? Hey, you'll be all right, don't worry about it. All right? Well, yeah, I mean, well, it's LO or something like that. No, LO, that's it. It's in a, in a good position, I mean... But it's just a blood pressure, isn't it? I mean, Sorry, I just want to go. Oh, right, I think I've got everything now. You ready, Mrs. S? You're lucky. Good luck to her. Look after you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come out. Next, the shocking story of a 36-year-old man admitted after overdosing on 60 paracetamol tablets in Jimmy's. Do you want to walk around? Oh, one well, of your back ribs would be nice. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Just how many shows can you have? Oh, don't worry. It's not unusual for it to go on. Well, isn't it time to check the baby again? Yeah, let's go and do that now. And then we must start thinking about popping the waters. Uh, well, won't I bring it on sooner? What, you think she wants a long labour, eh? What about her blood pressure? Hey. I said, think about popping the waters, that's all. It depends how she's getting on. Well, it was four centimetres last time. Oh, Terry. <laughs> Have a go of this. What, to calm him down? Shut him up. How's it going, lad? <clears throat> it's not good, Frank. How do you mean? It's spread all right, but don't worry, I'll ring in sick. How's that going to help? Well, I can spend the day on it then. Hold on, hold on. We'll talk about this later when Chrissy's gone to work. But she'll need to know how bad it is. Never mind, just carry on. I'll need to take more floorboards up. Well, just to see what's going on. All right, but just don't start treating it yet. <sighs> Do you know it's nearly time for school? I've got ten minutes, yeah. And don't go in the bathroom. What if I want away? We'll see Lenny and he'll make sure it's safe. What if Jess wants away? She's got to go home soon. But Dad... Never mind, love. The floor's up and it's dangerous. He said he's going to ring in sick. Oh, why? Is the smell too much for him? So he can work on it. I mean, if we agree, he should. You know we don't agree. I think he should give you the money back. We call in a big firm and then we claim on the insurance. If we can. Have you talked about money yet? No. 
I was waiting till we were on our own. I mean, the kids are still hanging round. Oh, Frank, I can't be late today. Well, I'll go in late. I'll see to it. <sighs> was that our Katie coming upstairs? Playing in her room with Jess. Oh, God, what a time to start. Well, go and chase them. Go on, I'll finish this. All right. Make sure Jeff's in his bed, please. Morning, Mrs Rogers. Five minutes more, Katie. Away! And the rest of the time is to tidy up. Good morning, Jess. How are you? Is it autumn yet, Mrs Rogers? Well, it's going on that way, love. Why? Is it the start of autumn? Well, there isn't a special day, you know, like there is for the start of spring. Mum, we're playing here. I've done the label on your gym bag, madam, so don't forget it. Why do you want to know? If it's autumn, the leaves fall down. It's lovely, that. The colour of the leaves. This could be a bed as well, if we needed it. Mummy and Daddy have the same bed, and this is me and my bed. It'd be nice to be able to sleep on leaves. That's soft, wouldn't it? Do you want a blanket for Mummy now? Leaves get wet on the road and make the car skid. Jess, do you want a Prezi? What? She can be Caroline. Caroline looks after you now and does everything that her Mummy does. I mean, she does, doesn't she? Tell you what I think. I think we should make this Caroline's bed. Say this is Caroline's room in your house. Well, who's next door to her? Daddy, and then this is me. That's better. But your mummy sleeps with God now, so should we take her out of this bed? I think that's a lot better now because it's more like the way it is. Come on, girls. Time's up. Come on, Jessica. You've got to go home. And you've got to go to school as well. yours now. What's up, love? Forgotten something? No. Come on. You tidy this mess up. Your mother's on the warpath downstairs. Was it you that wanted to go to the toilet? Yeah. Well, go now, there's a good girl, before I take more of the floorboards up. Oh, come on, hold still. Oh, that's better. You ready for the next one now? But you don't understand. I had it all written down. I had it all planned. Oh, stuff that. Look, I mean, if it's getting too much, have the pethidine. It won't hurt the baby. But it gets through to the baby. Look, if your blood pressure's getting any higher because you're not getting the pain relief, well, it's no use to anyone, is it? Especially not the baby. Decided? Yeah, I already decided before I came in. Things change. You can't always predict. Oh, look, if the baby comes out dubbed up, well, you can handle that, can't you? Of course we can. An injection of knock-in and oxygen. But this way it gets the oxygen all the time. Oh, well, come on, Sue. You're being stupid and stubborn now. Tell you what, we'll do another trace. I mean, so far, the baby's doing fine, and she's OK. OK? Well, I, I don't think that's good enough. Look, I know it's a bit upsetting for you, but if she wants to go on a while... <sighs> They're watching my blood pressure all the time. Like hawks. Trouble is, you've got an active Bertha here. What, you mean like those ones who want the water and all that and bean bags? No way. She's just being stubborn now. It's just got to be the best, Terry, for you. Oh, God. <sighs> right. Time for school. Jess? I want Mummy back. I know, sweetheart. I want Mummy. But, Jessica, look, we've talked about this. Mummy's gone. No, she's in Katie's house. What do you mean? Katie's got my Mummy doll. <sighs> you took three dolls and you brought three back. I'm sure Katie wouldn't keep your things. Now, come on, little one. Time for school. Didn't you say it was science today? Your first science lesson. And what's it going to be? Butterflies. Butterflies? Well, I'll be here at tea time and you can tell me everything you've learned. But you already know science. <laughs> well, there's lots of things I don't know, even when I go to work doing my job. I think of someone like Alison, a whole lifetime spent finding things out. Hmm? I want you to tell me what you learn at school and sometimes perhaps I want to teach you more because I want you to like learning. Okay. Now school. 
But she did keep my mummy doll. <sighs> I just want to be able to push. Not yet. Hold on a minute. Well, maybe the gas may help, eh? Hey? It doesn't, Terry. It doesn't help one bit. She wants to push, though. All right. Next time you want to push, you push. Or shall I move? No. Or shall I stay here? Yes. I just want to be able to push and not, don't, not to all the time. Oh, she said you can go on. I'm sorry about this. I just want to push. Well, you can go on, but just do it how you feel, right? Go on. Two acting circles here. Go on, push. Go on, push. <laughs> Lenny, you said it was simple. Well, it is once the acros are in place. How do you mean? The supports. Well, I have to put them here, you see. They hold the ceiling whilst I work. So that's another room out of action. Well, I'll leave you space, though, to move through. You're not on, Chris, you let the roof. <laughs> yeah, but look, if... I mean it, Lenny. You're not on. Every time you work up there, the less happy I've been. Well, what's the answer? Simple. You give me back the £500 and we go to an established firm. When, when, when would you want it back like? Like now, Len. I mean, it could cost us £1,500. Uh, I can't do that, Frank. The truth is, I'm overcommitted, you see. I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul. We went into one of these timeshares, right, and uh, it turned out to be a bloody disaster. Timeshare? Lenny, this is my one and only home. I've got three kids and the house is falling apart around me ears. It isn't, though. Just a few days' work. Never mind a few days' work. You said that last Frank, time. Frank, I'll work on it for as long as it takes and I promise I'll do you a decent job, but I can't give you back the 500 quid. You mean it's spent? Not even spent. It's... It's just... swallowed. I'm joking. Lenny, I thought you had more sense. You know what our Maureen's like? Well, not so much Maureen. A mum and a dad. I don't match up to their Michael, their Mark. I'm the only one that's never made it. They're just so material, Frank, they are. But how, Lenny? I mean, I know we can all get in a mess, but you're on a good whack. You just... should have been able to manage. Just my luck. Just when I needed the most, the overtime came to a stop. Ah, don't give me that. I mean, there's always something going on in maintenance. No! Not now there isn't. Not now they've cut back. It's come for me at a waste time. I can see that. And I can sympathise. But where does it leave me, Len? Look, Frank, I really feel bad about this. Just give me a chance to, to put it right, eh? For my own pride, at least. Give Dad a go, whilst we sort you out, eh? <laughs> hey. All right. All right, little fella. Hey, uh... Hey, it's your dad here. Oh, he's a cracker, isn't he? Hey. <laughs> Long? No. I just thought it better not to call for you today at school after what you said yesterday. And you're quite right. In the end, it's up to you. If you want to bunk off, as you call it. Yeah, well, it certainly is mine, but it's not a box. It's the top of my kitchen scales. Yeah, I think what happened about the dolls is that they did a swap and Jessica didn't realise. Oh. Well, look, if you want to come in, I'll have a hunt round. Uh, you see, it's the one she pretends is the mummy. Um, no ordinary doll. Well, they've brightened up the room. Almost Moorish. Sorry. Uh, excuse me a minute, please. Lenny! Frank! Uh, Chrissy, I can come back any time. Oh, right. Mrs. Rogers, uh, did, uh, did Frank get all of you at work? No. Oh, we're supposed to ring you. Look, what Expect is all this, Lenny? Oh, uh, 
Back rooms, Mrs. Rogers. They, uh, they just hold the ceiling up. Hold up? Support. Well, they also mark the ceiling, Lenny. And they most certainly mark the floor. And this is a new carpet down here. Uh, Chrissy, I'll come back later on. Uh, you'll have had a chance to talk to Katie by then about the doll. A doll? It's got nothing to do with you. Yeah, but I found a doll in the bathroom pushed down the hole. Pushed down the hole? Well, hidden, I'd say. I rescued her. Hang on, she's just up on the landing. Why would Katie want to hide a doll? Well, we don't know. It's the same one. Honestly, as if I didn't have enough. Hey, Chrissy, it's not an emergency. Your ceiling falling down on you is. Oh, no, no. You said Jess was upset. She'll expect to find it when she comes home. I've got an hour's grace. She's out with my father and Caroline. Mm. Here we go. Identifier. Yes, that's the one. She's, uh, she's a bit filthy. Look, let me give her a sponge down. It's the least I could do. Oh, she won't mind. Oh, she will. I, I know it's none of my business, but uh, I've got three daughters of my own, so I know. You're an expert on everything, aren't you, Lenny? Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Vehicle maintenance, parenting, but not on dry rot, I'm afraid. I'll just see my friend out to the door now, and I'll have a word with you when I get back. So if you could just pack up your things, please. Yeah, but I arranged with Frank. I'm sorry he didn't pass that on to me. So if you could pack up your things, ready to go. So it's all right if I keep her? Yes. Ralph was turning out a delightful companion and something guide. And a fateful guide. A fateful guide. Oh, just... faithful. It must be faithful. Of course, if she does come back... What's her name? Lana, Mrs Costello. You met her, remember? Oh, yeah. We don't get many cards. I've done you a picture, though. I started it in Matt when I was bored. And it is all aboard at dinner time. That's lovely, thank you. I played you up a bit yesterday. I got upset because my dad was here. Well, I think this is charming. I'll find somewhere to put it later. It looks like you, doesn't it? Well, see, there's me and our Gary. My dad, sort of, like my family, all together on one page. You weren't very nice to your father yesterday. Did he punish you a lot when you were small? Well, I was bad. I suppose he had to, didn't he? No more than anyone else would have done. Did he um, have any problems? Gambling? Drinking? He did some of that. No more than other people. So what is it, then? Is it just that you feel he runs you down? That you can't confide in him? I used to lie to him when I was living with him. It's a fair do as if he doesn't believe me now. Well, I would, if you wanted to confide in me. Oh, don't worry. I'm not asking you to. I think that bad things can happen to people, and I think they've happened to you. It's hard to talk about. But if you do want to confide in someone, well, I'm here. I listen. I understand why you did it, Kate. I think you were wrong, but there's no harm done, love. And you know why your mum's got a cob on, don't you? It's to do with the dry rot, not the doll. No, I don't understand. I hate grown-ups. <sighs> Look, I've got to go and have a word with your mum. You know she's given Paul Lenny the boot. Oh, well, he's pathetic, him. <sighs> Ask me, mum, what Mr Choi said. this? I said we'd put it up somewhere. Well, I would. At work, perhaps. Then he says there's uh, cutbacks on maintenance. It's something I'll have to look into, Chris. Had me worried a bit there. You are amazing. How can you think about anything else apart from the state of this stupid house? Just caught Jeff on the way out. He said you got a firm lined up. Yeah. Well, I think we should have it fixed first and buy a reputable firm. And Michael Troy agrees with me. What does he know about it? Oh, he only walked in on all of Lenny's chaos, didn't he? I didn't know where to put myself. 
Ah, uh, now I see. So that was the trigger, eh? Be made a show in front of your smooth doctor friend. Oh, don't be stupid. Well, you just said it, Chris. You felt showing up. Oh, I had Bright Spark Katie added as well. Bereavement therapy by Katie Rogers. You came down hard on her, you know. I don't think I did. I mean, you can't just barge in on somebody else's life, organise them left, right and centre. I mean, what sort of behaviour is that? It just could be something in the genes. <laughs> Stop it. I feel sorry for Lenny. That's why I didn't kick him out myself. Still, I suppose it's better coming from you. I mean, I do have to work with the lad. Thanks. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. What did he say, Mr Choi? He said he's very happy that Jessica's all right. She's very glad to have her doll back. She didn't ask me for it. Why? Well, I suppose you still seem a little bit large to her, love. A little bit frightening. Maybe she thought she'd be rude. But why? I would have said something. Because you're not Chinese and you're your mother's daughter. Oh, Frank. Oh, look, look. I know it's a hard thing to understand, the way that people behave when somebody dies. But... Come here. <sighs> now, listen. Do you know when your granddad died? Your grandma, every tea time, pretended he was coming home. And she did that every day for a whole year. I didn't know she'd done that, love. You weren't very old, were you, Dad? Eight. Uh, it's a joint present, really. Well, my alpha had asked your girl to go and get it for me, but he gave her the money. Oh, and she did? Uh, yeah. Hey, what's more? They're both coming here. They'll be here in a minute. Mm, I think that's when I'll have my shower. <laughs> How's the stitches? Oh, they're not too bad. At least I won't have to sit in a rubber ring. <laughs> Some of them are really hobbling round, aren't they? But you're not too bad. <laughs> no. Mind you, if you said how about it, Terry, I don't think they'd be all that keen. <laughs> uh, Hey, I've just noticed something. It just says Baby Sullivan on it, you know, name. Oh, well, that's because we weren't sure whether the name we chose would suit him or not. Degsy. Degsy. Daniel. Well, Danny. Daniel. Dan. A bit desperate, isn't it? Yeah, hey. I agree. It's Daniel John. <laughs> Hello. Oh. How's he doing? Oh, he's fine. Hey, you don't work down here as well, do you? Yeah? No, I was just going off. I thought I'd come see how you all are. Hey, look, did you deliver this baby? What are you complaining? I don't reckon it is. It doesn't look like him. Hasn't got a muzzy. Oh, he does look like me. Look. Oh, he's going to suffer in later life, then, oh. isn't he? <laughs> is he a friend? <laughs> mm. <laughs> look, take no notice of him. He's brilliant. I mean, considering he was born early. Early? Oh, thanks for this morning. Mm. Oh, you did well. Hey, didn't <laughs> she just? <laughs> By the way, what are you going to call him? Danny. Well, Daniel Sullivan. Well, Daniel Sullivan, there's nothing much wrong with you. Eh? Yeah. I see. These are windows. So this isn't a bed anymore. This is a house. And this is the bed. And you're making the cover. <laughs> good. It's very good. Uh, I got a letter today from Hong Kong, from Grandpa and Grandma. They'd like us to go over there. I can't go because of work, uh, but maybe Caroline. Uh... Jess, uh, play with Katie tomorrow. Tell her your good friends. I think she had a big telling off from her mummy. Katie took my mummy doll. I want to play with Hattie. You can't. Well, well Alison's busy. Uh, we can't really. Uh... Well, I'll see. I don't know what's going to happen there. Found it in the road. I'm sure Terry won't mind. It probably fell off his taxi. Well, I'm going to put this up on the fridge. I don't know what your father would say if he called round. He wouldn't even look. You squashed him right over to the side. He doesn't get a look in. He wouldn't notice, though. I can't even see what's under his nose. Gary this and Gary that. And Gary will look after you, Louise. 
But Gary did look after you. Well, that's what you said. When you first went to Chadwick House, he fought your battles for you. I cried a lot. He put his arms around me. He let me cuddle up at night. I couldn't have got through without him. But now it's wrong, I know it is. I keep on asking him to stop. But he won't, and I want him to! Dialysis treatment prevents a smiling six-year-old from going to see Cliff Richard in concert in Jimmy's next. Sue. What? Eh, uh, nothing. It, it's all right. What is it? It's okay. I was, I was just being stupid. What's wrong? Well, I, I thought I couldn't see him breathing. Well, if you didn't keep looking at him all the time. You seen his little fingers? They're perfect. I should hope so. No, I mean really perfect. Look. Oh. They're perfect. That's incredible, isn't it? I mean, he's incredible. I can't believe he's mine. Well, ours. We're lucky you know that. I mean, must have done something right, mustn't I? You did. She didn't exactly say. She didn't need to. It was clear what she meant. It would answer a lot of questions if we knew for certain. She said she wanted him to stop. How did you react? I didn't. I didn't do anything. I rang you. What should I have done? Nothing. You did the right thing. No panic or fuss. Your reaction is very important to her. She's testing the ground, so to speak. I must admit, I didn't know what to do. That's why I rang you. I just needed someone to talk to. My husband's away at the moment on a SAFA course, and I thought... I understand. She should be home by now. How long have you known Louise? Not long, really. I feel I've always known her. As long as you realise just how difficult she can be. I do. Well, you don't need me to tell you, then. If I could offer you a piece of advice, though, don't promise what you can't give. Oh, for heaven's sake! I'm not promising anything. I'm interested in the girl, that's all. I care about her. I I'm a magistrate. I know what I'm doing. Let's see, someone's working hard. How about a cracking day today? It's been brilliant. You left the grill pan full of fat. Sorry, 
The thing about Ralph, he plays up after himself. What is it, Harry? Long drawn and quartered, or just the odd 50 lashes? You've blocked the sink. Look, I was leaving it to set, then I could just scoop it out into the bin. There's a perfectly good frying pan under there. But I like my sausages grilled. Look, I'll have to get the grate up, or I can't get this lot shifted. You're dripping. What are you doing? I'm wiping it up so you don't go skidding on it. That's the tea towel. Floor cloths are down there. Oh, out the way, will you? You'll be pleased to know I'll be blocking someone else's sink from now on. I found myself a flat. This do. That's a polishing rag. Where's this flat, then? Off Bickerstaff Road. Oh, well, have you been down there? It's all right to me. Have you ever been down there at night? No. Nope. Well, when you do go down at night, take somebody with you. Don't go on your own. Rough, is it? Well, all I can say is I wouldn't like to live there. And I wouldn't like my friends to live there, neither. It just attracts a certain type of person down there, and that's all I'm saying. Well, what type of person's that age? Oh, murderers, rapists, scallywags, you name it. I believe the policeman walked down there in threes. But don't take my word for it. I won't. Here, let me do that. Have you got some caustic soda and a wire coat hanger? What are you doing here? Louise, I've just come to see how you're getting on. Oh, yeah. Did you ring her? Yes. I've made you the box in Wood's way. It's for your jewellery. Oh. oh, thank you. That's lovely. It's crap. Well, I like it. The lid doesn't fit properly. Is there any tea? Uh, Louise. What? You know what you were telling me about your brother, Gary? Well, you've told it, haven't you? Uh, no, Mrs. it's Collins just that I... I call her Anna. Right. Right. I thought perhaps you'd like to tell Mrs Mackay what you told me. I didn't tell you anything. It doesn't matter. I'll call another time. Well, thank you for coming. Bye, Louise. See you later. Thanks for the coffee. Right. What'll happen to our Gary? That depends. On what? All sorts of things. Like what? What do you want to happen to him? It's not up to me, is it? Will you lot decide that? Tell Mrs Mackay. She's asking you. It makes no difference what I want. It never does. Well, if you don't tell her, she can't help you. I don't want her to help me. Why did you stop me going out of the door then, Louise? Look, you asked me what would happen to your brother. I can't answer your question till you tell me what he's done. Do you understand? I don't want him locked up. He's sucking his thumb. What's he going to have a dummy then, won't we? He's not having a dummy. There's nothing wrong with him sucking his thumb. I sucked my thumb till I was ten. Yeah, I see. He'll end up growing up like him. Hey, what's wrong with that, sir? Look, I'm going to go with the chippy. What do you want? Oh, where? Uh, fish and chips three times and some peas. Pizza. Hey, Look, uh, I was doing a thing and you and you out, you know, for uh, a dinner like to pay you back. Can you get a scissor? Oh, well, not like that. We can't. Oh, it doesn't matter. I mean... Don't worry about it. It's been nice, haven't you? Yeah, well, I thought, you know, for me keeping all that and you've been... I'll get lost. I'll tell you what, why don't you two go out? I don't mind. Oh, no chance of not leaving you on your own. She'll give me Dad a ring. No. I don't mind. Well, look, I mean, we haven't been out for ages, have we, or anything like that? So, come on, let's go out. I mean, give your Mum a ring. Ten years guarantee. That's brilliant. Yeah, and how are we going to pay for it? Oh, we saw something else. Like what? I don't know. 
Let's worry about that when the bill comes. Frank, I'm worried about it now, love. You get a loan or something? Oh, yeah, they're just going to give us a loan the state of our account. Of course they will. Everyone wants you to borrow money these days. And it's people like you and me who are soft enough to do that. Even if they did give us a loan, love, how are we going to pay it back, eh? We can hardly afford to live here as it is. You make the sounds of it was all my fault. Frank, I didn't buy the flaming house. No, but you wanted it, though, didn't you? Wanting and having are two different things, love. I want lots of things. I want the moon, Frank, but I know I can't have it. Chris, if I could get it for you, I would. Nearly done. So the next time you have sausages, I'll leave the fat to set, shall I? I won't be here next time, Eddie. Why well, have you gone off sausages? I'm going tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yep. First thing. I'll get my gear ready tonight. What's the hurry? There isn't. I just said I'm moving tomorrow, that's all. Better have your house back to yourself. And don't they need references or anything? No, not like that. I have to think that there's somebody just going to live there. I suppose they're just after me money. But it's costing you a bomb. That's quite cheap, really. Oh, well, you get what you pay for, don't you? I can understand a young man like you wanting to go and live on his own, though. It's looking better, though. No? Wish I could live on my own. If I could choose who to live with, it would be Edna, of course, God rest her. But if my doctor said to me tomorrow, you can go and live on your own, I'd be as happy as a sandboy. There you are. As good as new. Can you do us a favour, Mick? Passes my tablets on top of the cupboard there. I don't think all that even with the, the plunges done me any good. I'm just trying to fit this on that uh -huh. somehow. So you tried to show me. It's ever so complicated. It's something like... Oh, I can't remember. I can't myself. No. <laughs> Where are they, anyway? Hey, upstairs. I'm doing a babysitting. Sarah? In here, John. All right. All right. Where is he, then? Uh, upstairs. They're getting ready. They're going out? Yeah, for something to eat. Hey, we could go with them. Yeah, fine by me, yeah. Okay, I'll go see what Sue says. Fancy your beers, John? No, uh, better not drink old Terry's beer, eh? It's not Terry's, it's mine. I'm driving. Hiya, can I come in? Yeah, uh, what are you doing here? Mm. We just came to see you both, and the little one. Oh. There he is. Yeah, he's asleep. I don't know. She doesn't want Barry to babysit. Oh, he'll be fine. I mean, it's only for a couple of hours, and she's done him a bottle. Well, I don't really want to go out, you know, and I haven't got anything to wear. She says not unfitted anymore. But tell her she looks lovely. I just don't feel right. Why don't you try your green dress? Oh, look, uh, I'm going to leave you to it. I'm going downstairs. I don't want to talk about it. I want to forget. Sometimes you have to talk about it to be able to forget. I can make it go away sometimes. But the other times? I can't. Is it Gary? You said... I've not got to tell. Did he say that to you? It's a secret. Yours and Gary's secret? I told him I didn't want to do it anymore. But he doesn't listen to me. What does he do, Louise? He locks the door so nobody will come in. I hate it when he does that. I tell him I don't like the door being locked. Why don't you unlock it? Because he gets mad with me. But he has no right. Why does he lock the door? So nobody will come in. So he knows where he's doing is wrong, then? I suppose so. I don't know how to say it. Could you write it down? 
Louise is very good at drawing. Aren't you, Louise? Let's get a pen and paper, then. It's gone so dry since I had Daniel. Really? Do things like that happen when you have babies? Yeah. Everything goes haywire. I suppose it's the hormones. You're glad you have him, though. Oh, yes. <laughs> Can't imagine life without him now. Terry dotes on him. Has everything worked out? Yeah. <laughs> now, I'm sure you got this wrong here, Tech, because you're supposed to have two pins. Our Claire used to have two. Yeah, but she's a girl, isn't she? I mean, they're different. How are they? Well, look, 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 you've got to make sure you don't stick the pin in him. Hey, What do you mean? Well, you put your hand in my eye, put your hand underneath. See? Hmm? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot about that bit. Uh, how come you know so much? Yeah, I looked after my nephew for three weeks when he was four months old. You learn fast when you have to. I wonder who that is. Yeah. Well, you should do the babysitting, John. Hiya. All right. Um, is Larry in? Uh, yeah. Come in. Thanks. Hiya. Uh, I wondered if I could have a word, Barry. What about? Well, we've been having some trouble with the house. Frank's found some dry rot. We've been trying to get it sorted. Well, you smelt it, didn't you, Terry? Y yeah, that's right. Uh, well, my dad had the same problem, didn't he? Only we had to rip the floorboards off. Yeah, well, we've had to have a lot of work done as well. All the floorboards and joists replaced. Who did you get to do it for you? It's a long story. We tried to get it done on the cheap, but it came back. So it's ended up we've had to pay for it being done properly. Well, you can claim on insurance, though. No, it's just it. We can't. How come? Because the rot started when the bathroom got flooded and the house was boarded up. It was before we bought it, so they don't want to know. So what are you telling me for? Because you were the one responsible for the flood, Barry. Hey, don't start pointing a finger at me. It's not to do with me. Well, look, I think it'd be better if... Hey, John, just keep out of it. Look, we can't pay the bill. It's as simple as that. And as it's not our fault, I don't see why we should. You were the one responsible for it. Look, it's your for fault. It. You bought the flaming please, house. Please. Speaking professionally. Well, tell him then. Well, he was the one who caused the flood. He should pay for it. But presumably you had a survey done on the house before you bought it. <gasps> That's not the point. It is. I told you. Hey, buddy. Hey, listen, Terry, I'm not getting blamed for anything that I never did. Who did the survey for you? No one. Frank bought the house at the auction. Without having a survey? Well, isn't there nothing she can do? Uh, well, no, not a lot. Uh, who did you buy the place off? Yeah, well, that's, that's Osborne. He boarded it up, so it's down to him, isn't it? Well, you could uh, certainly try, but... He's bankrupt. Frank's phoned him. He doesn't want to know. He owes money all over the place. And so will we if I don't get this sorted out. Anywhere else? No, just there. Did he ever ask you to touch him? And it's usually when you're getting washed. In the bathroom. Because there's a lock on the door. He starts tickling me. He always starts like that. I hate it because I start laughing. I can't help it. But all the time, really, I want to cry. I want to hit him and tell him to get off. But I don't do anything. I'll just stand there and pretend I'm somewhere else. It's all right. It's all right. It won't ever happen again. We'll see to that. You won't get into trouble. You won't let anything happen to him, will you? Listen to me, Louise. I know how difficult this must have been for you. You're a brave girl. But it's not your secret, it's Gary's secret. And I know this might sound silly to you, but by telling us, you've helped him. Honestly, we can do something now. We all need help at times to sort our problems out. I think part of you wanted to tell someone. Am I right? I wanted to tell Anna. I'm glad you chose me. He didn't mean to hurt me. Not really. But he did. He did hurt you. And it's wrong. Do you understand? Yeah. It's not your fault. 
going to tell him? He has to know that what he did was wrong. Because if he doesn't know, he might do it again. And it might not be you next time, it might be somebody else. Do you understand? Yeah. If we could have claimed on the insurance, I wouldn't have even bothered mentioning it to you. But that isn't a problem, is it? I don't know what we're going to do. All our money's tied up in the house. Everything all right? Yeah. Yeah, fine. Uh, we are looking after the house, you know, if that's what you're worried about. No, no, I was just looking around the old place. Gone what it was like. <laughs> um, well, here's the rent, two months. Oh, cheers. It's all there. Great. Right. Um, how long's Barry's then? Only oh, till tomorrow. Oh, I see. Why did you ask? Uh, no, no reason. But he's not a lodger or anything like that, you know. No, I didn't think he was. Um, I've got a envelope for you, as a matter of fact. I uh, didn't know what to buy the baby, so I thought the cheque would be good enough. Thanks. What are we going to do then, John? I don't know. Well, what would you expect me to do about it? What would you expect us to do? Well, I don't know, but it's not my problem, all right? Well, I'm not so sure about that, Barry. Chrissy, how are you? I'm fed up. What's been going on? Look, I've had enough of this as well. I'm getting off to the... <sighs> I thought we were going out for a meal. Here you go. I might be able to take a mouthful. Oh, I've done you some bread, no? I'm going to be able to manage any bread. I'll leave it there. I might throw a piece. You sure you're not to work with the fire on? I'm freezing. It's funny, though. You look as if you're sweating. Yeah, feel me fuddled. You're red hot. They are. Burning on the outside, freezing on the inside. That's the way it starts. And what exactly is it, Harry? Well, the doctors have tried to tell me, but it's all complicated. It's all to do with my heart, you see. It's its way of telling me that me body's not well. Old packed, are you? Yeah. Look, uh, is there anybody I should ring? Any family or anyone? No, I'll be all right. I'm OK. You just get away in the morning, eh? What's that mean to yours, Juba? I don't know. I don't interfere with him. He just comes and goes as he likes. He mightn't come back here at all, for all I know. Any more of this, is there? Yeah, I think so. There's only a bit left. <sighs> so you managed to eat it all, eh? I'm forcing it down myself. I suppose I could stay. I wish you were me, ma'am. Oh, that's it. Just there, a bit harder. Oh, I felt really tense before I came. You shouldn't have offered to babysit then. We could have gone out, relaxed a bit. Yeah, I don't think it would have been very relaxing somehow. Terry was in a funny mood. I gave him that check. I didn't think he was going to take it. I told you we should have got him a present. Mm. That's all right, I'll go. Are you sure? Yeah. Get some practice in. Practice for what? For when I'm a dad. Oh, I see. And when's that likely to be? Pretty soon, I hope. Well, let me know, won't you? Of course. You want a baby, don't you? Oh, right now, it's you know, have a car. We'll talk. You bet we'll talk.
We continue following trainee ambulanceman Richard as he undergoes the rigorous training and exams before he can go on the road with Jimmy's next. <laughs> 